Bring up spots one and two. She needs a little powder. I'm on it. Did I leave the coffee mate? Q talent. Five seconds, Katie. Graphics on my mark. Three, two, one. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Katie Correct. Later in this broadcast, we'll have an exclusive interview with Bigfoot and Yeti who claim that global warming is just a hoax wrapped in a myth. But first, we have team coverage of the once shadowy Control Intelligence Agency and its newly public project to use a team of virtual agents to gather and distribute real manufacturing information from and about the many members of Machine Builder Nation. The previously clandestine organization will hold a press briefing momentarily. But first, we're going live to our reporter, Mike Field, standing by with one of the CIA's officials. Mike, are you there? Yes, Katie, I'm here, and there's plenty of electricity in the air. Uh, as the semi-mysterious control intelligence agency comes in from the cold. I'm speaking here with Agent K about the CIA's recent efforts. Agent K, can you tell us a little bit more about the CIA's uh, jurisdiction, its origins, or even its location? Uh, no, no, I'm not at liberty to say anything. Well, uh, recent intelligent reports by the CIA on the distributed I.O. devices and power supplies used by machine builders have made their way out onto the internet at controldesign.com and have caused quite a stir in the past few months. Uh, can you comment on how this has happened? No, not really. Fine. Well, uh, our sources indicate that the CIA's latest intelligence on design and simulation software was collected by its rumored virtual brigade of online or otherwise disembodied operatives. Can you tell us how many study participants are using electrical computer-aided design, or perhaps how many are using it freestanding compared to those using it in addition to mechanical CAD? Do I have clearance, Clarence? OK, well, don't quote me on this, but here are a few early results. Exactly 58% of the respondents say they use ECAD for control system design. And of these, just about half use a standalone ECAD program, while more than 37% use it as part of an overall software package. And 12.5% use a third-party add-on to mechanical CAD. So what do you make of this data? Uh, how are these machine control engineers using ECAD? Well, I think there's little doubt that machine builders are using ECAD and simulation software more extensively. The benefits they get from reduction in drawing errors and drawing database simplifications are hard to ignore. But many are not yet using it to what many of the suppliers will call its full potential. For instance, only 40% of the study participants say that they use it to do automated wire numbering or lists or bill of material generation, and only a third use the real-time cross-checking capability afforded, and barely a quarter make use of its online collaboration options. Interesting, but does this tell us uh, anything about what factors are driving control engineers and their ECAD product choices? Um, yes, it does. About 40% of the study respondents say the cost of ECAD software, the use of industry standard drawing formats, and evidence of ease of use and training support are the very important factors in their decisions. Apparently not as critical, but clearly important, almost 25% say size and variety of the software symbol library is very important. In all these cases, more than 80% found these factors either very important or important in their purchasing decision making. Sorry to interrupt, guys, but it looks like the CIA press briefing is about to begin. Let's go live to the podium. Thank you for coming today. We're holding this first ever press conference for two reasons. The first is to share and disseminate the results of our latest market intelligence report on design and simulation software, which we now can tell you was successfully completed with the help of our new brigade of simulated dare I say, virtual online operatives. Now, while our previous intelligence gathering on I.O. modules and power supplies and circuit protection was just as successful as this current mission, we realized that future efforts will need additional resources as we conduct market intelligence in areas that include electromechanical components, machine safety, and sensing and machine vision. So, the second reason for this briefing is to announce that our agency is actively recruiting 
controls engineers, and other technical professionals in Machine Builder Nation to join us as virtual brigade members. Please, hold your questions until the end. We believe we now can operate more publicly since we've managed to minimize the dangers previously posed to our agents by the evil forces of chaos engineering by creating our own simulated and safe environment for intelligence gathering purposes. This means we can now bring civilian control engineers into our ranks. In fact, our simulation efforts have been so successful that the two agents right here next to me are virtual representations of their flesh and blood Whoa. counterparts. So to join our virtual brigade, interested candidates should contact us with their names and email addresses on the CIA's registration page on our website. And we'll give you that contact information at the conclusion of this press conference. Now, are there any questions? What are we going to do? What about the brigade? So is the CIA claiming its brigade actually can report on providing the percentage of control engineers now using simulation software? Yes, it can. Now, as you can see, our intelligence gathering found that 40% of the respondents state they're now using simulation software. And of these, almost 61% use it for control sequences, about 60% use it for motion simulation, almost 58% use it to integrate components, 51% use it for motion visualization, and more than 48% use it for component placement. So why are these tools useful to machine builders? Well, about 70% of the respondents say simulation software is either an important or very important factor in helping them with 3D visualization. Nearly 80% said simulation software provides very important or important value in duplicating sequences and conditions that are difficult to produce in a test shop. Now, in fact, we have corroborating evidence of this in the June cover story of Control Design Magazine. Senior technical editor Dan Abair reports that Hawkeye Pipe, a builder of large hydraulically powered machines that pour concrete segments, uses simulation to graph the target and actual positions of machine arm motion that Hawkeye engineer Ben Schmiggall says would be expensive or dangerous to perform in a shop test. In addition, the study found that more than 75% say that the software is important or very important to help them better define control system cost indicators, and an astounding nearly 90% of respondents said it's important or very important in speeding configuration and commissioning. Now that's all I can share with you today. So when can you tell us more? I can't tell. You can tell me I'm a reporter. No, I mean, I'm not sure. Well, can't you take a guess? Not for another few hours. You can't take a guess for another few hours? <sighs> Sorry, a matter of the utmost urgency to Machine Builder Nation has arisen. We must leave immediately. Good day to you all. Well, some amazing revelations from the CIA today. Not only did it provide some results on how machine builders are using design and simulation software, but it also launched its own virtual brigade, giving builders the chance to join its intelligence gathering efforts in the future. Here are those sign up and registration details again. Just visit controldesign.com slash CIA brigade. Remember to tune in tomorrow night when we talk to some local Hummer owners who are trying to increase their gas mileage by painting their SUVs green. Thanks and good night. <laughs>